Hello, this is Brother Des coming to you today from Prophetic Bible Teachings, our lesson for Sunday, February the 28th, 2021. And we are studying today from the book of Revelation, chapter 12, 10 to 17. We are still studying about the Great Tribulation and the components of the Great Tribulation on the seventh trumpet, judgment which will you know, appear with signs and wonders and personalities. Today, we're going to be talking about the sign foretelling the triumph of God's kingdom and also the sign of the remnant of Israel. As we look at our prophetic text, which is taken from Revelation 12, 10 through 17, this text is, the scriptures are broken down into two sections, really. First, we want to look at how God foretells his triumph. And second, we want to look at how God foretells Satan's attack on the woman and the intervention that God will take on behalf of the woman during the second half of the great tribulation on earth. So let's study. God foretells his triumph. The Apostle John stated that after Michael the archangel and his angels cast out Satan and his angels out of heaven, he said he heard a voice coming from heaven and the audible voice spoke of salvation, strength, power, and also the kingdom of God. Notice John said, and I saw and heard, I heard a loud voice saying in heaven, now is come salvation and strength, the kingdom of our God, the power of his Christ, for the accuser of the brethren is cast down, which accused them before God day and night. Let us now discuss these areas where God triumphs. First, we find that he triumphs in salvation. Salvation is consummation when we are in the presence of Christ. 1 John 3, 2 states, Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when we shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So salvation, that's salvation in its ultimate you know, somebody was asked one time, are you saved? He said, yes, I am. Sometimes, not yet. But what he was saying, yes, I am saved from the penalty of sin. Sometimes I'm saved from the temptations with sin. But one day I'll be saved from the very presence of sin. So when we look at salvation, when we see God face to face, we know that it's, it's all in. And then we see his triumph in strength and power. We find that human nations have abused power, strength. However, soon, Revelation has let us know that one day Jesus Christ will take all power on this earth. We talk about heaven, which is good, but it must be stated and emphasized that one day Jesus Christ is returning for his saints. We'll meet him in the air. And then after the tribulation, he will come back again with his saints to rule and reign on the earth. He will defeat the Satan. He will defeat Satan, the Antichrist, the false prophet, and the armies of the Gentiles who will be fighting against him as he's returning. He will intervene in the Jewish captivity and set them free, and they will accept him at this time as their Christ, their Messiah. Then we see that God, this triumph, he triumphs in that his kingdom will be set up. The kingdom will be established on the earth. There will be peace and righteousness, according to Psalm 2. <clears throat> Psalm 2 shares how God, you know, the, the, the heathen and the people without God, how they rage and they are against the Lord and his anointed Jesus Christ. But one day, you know, on the part of God, God just sitting down and laughing at him, knowing that one day he will judge in sore displeasure. 
for he will set up his king on the holy hill of Zion and will declare his decree about his son Jesus Christ, who will rule the world with the rod of iron, the Bible tells us. Therefore, he advised the world of rulers to be instructed, be wise, and to serve the Lord with fear and rejoice. Rejoice with trembling. Also, he says, it is better to kiss the son. Do not try to receive uh, his anger, you know, for, for those uh, who decide to accept his anger, they will perish. But those who put their trust in him will be blessed. And then we see that God triumphs in that his Christ will take over all power in heaven and on the earth. He will set up his millennial kingdom on the earth. The Jewish nation will be at peace. There will be no more war for them. They will worship the king of kings. Where? In the beloved city, New Jer in, in the beloved city, rather, Jerusalem. Read Zechariah chapter 14. Also, we find that this setting up of this kingdom, not only would it be the beloved city, but it will be the camp of the saints where the headquarters of the reign of Jesus Christ and his saints. Do not forget that the saints will rule and reign with the Lord during his reign on the earth. Let's look at Revelation 27 through 10. It says, And when the thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loose. Remember, when Jesus Christ comes back with the saints to the earth, Satan will be in prison, the bottomless pit, for 1,000 years. And we find that when the 1,000 years is a, they are expired, Satan shall be loose out of his prison. He shall go and deceive the nations, and we find which are all over the four quarters of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle. The number of whom will be as the sand of the sea, and they'll go up on the breadth of the earth and compass the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. And what will happen? Fire will come down from God out of heaven and devour them all. And the devil that deceived them, the Bible says he'll be cast into the lake of fire and brimstone with the beast and the false prophet who will already have been there when Jesus returns and defeat them in the battle at Armageddon. And he will be tormented day and night. And then the Bible says, And I saw the great white throne and him that sat on it. And so we see this judgment will be coming. And so Satan will be judged. But prior to that now, before this happens, Satan still remains as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And so we see the triumph in that God, in his mechanism for his believers to overcome Satan as he comes at you as a roaring lion. And even in the great tribulation when you will be gone, but we find that the 144,000 will spill be down on the earth, preaching where John the Baptist left off from. So he's, he established something, a mechanism that believers today and then will be able to overcome Satan, and that's by the blood of the Lamb. The Bible says in verse 11, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved not their lives even unto death. The blood of the Lamb. There is a wounding, walking power in the blood of the Lamb. And may we never forget that. And the word of the testimony. These people were true martyrs of Jesus Christ. They could not deny him. Matthew 10, 32, 34 tells us that whosoever therefore shall confess me before man, him will I also confess before my Father which is in heaven. But whosoever deny me before man, him also will I deny before my Father, which is in heaven. Oh, hallelujah. And the Bible says, they love not their lives even unto death. This is speaking about putting Christ first and ourselves last. Some time ago, I heard a little say saying which indicates our joy. They say, you want real joy? This is how it works. J-O-Y, Jesus first, others next, yourself last, and that's joy. The second thing we want to look at here is that God, God foretells 
Satan's attack on the woman and his intervention for the woman during the second half of the great tribulation on the earth. Verse 12, he said in Revelation 12, Therefore rejoice ye heaven, and ye that dwell in them, meaning in the heavens, those who have been already gone, and we praise God. But he said on the earth during the great tribulation, woe unto the inhabitants, the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil is come down unto you having great wrath because he knoweth that he has but a short time. Satan's attack on the woman Israel and her remnant will continue because he knows that he has a short time. And remember, the 144,000 will be preaching in the Great Tribulation, and also the nation of Israel will be going through. So we must remember that Satan hates Israel because the Redeemer came out of Israel. So for this nation, this will be the time of Jacob's trouble during the Great Tribulation. When we look at the realization that his casting out of heaven, he will attack the woman Israel. He will attack them. And when the dragon saw that he was cast out to the earth, he persecuted the woman which brought forth the man child. When Satan saw he was out, he will prosecute Israel. Keep in mind, in Genesis 3.15, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle, and above every beast of the field. Upon thy belly shall thy go, and the dust shall thou eat all the days of thy life. Notice, And I will put enmity between thee and the woman, between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head. That's when Jesus Christ comes back. And he said, thou shall bruise his heel. That's when Jesus was crucified. He only could bruise the heel of Jesus Christ, but he came forth from the grave miraculous. And he's in heaven today making intercession for you and me. But one day Jesus will crush the head of Satan. God will allow the woman to escape Satan's attack during the great tribulation. Notice, and to the woman were given Two wings of an eagle, of a great eagle, that she may fly into the wilderness, into her place where she is nourished, notice, for a time and times and a half times from the face of the serpent. This is basically three and a half years. So it's the second half of the great tribulation. He will give her two wings. There's not an aeroplane. As some commentators suggest, note the scripture, note this scripture. And Moses went up to God and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain saying, Thou shall, thus thou shalt say unto the house of Jacob and tell thy children of Israel, Ye have seen what I did unto the Egyptians and how I bear you on eagles wings and brought you Unto myself. The, eagle, the eagle's wings here is a symbolic, it's symbolic, which is an indication of God's protection for his people. Whatever this great eagle is, it will carry the remnant of the Israelis safely from the jaws of Satan and his crowd during the great tribulation on the earth. The Bible says she will fly away into the wilderness. Unto her place means that God has a place where he will protect the remnant. In Jesus Christ's prediction while he was on earth, in Matthew 24 and 16, it, he states that during the great tribulation, they should flee unto the mountains. Remember, they spent 40 years in the wilderness before, previously, as God led them. And the Bible says she will be nourished for three and a half years from the face of the serpent, the devil, uh, and Satan. God gave the Israeli people manna while they were in the wilderness for 40 years. Well, he can do it again. He can do it again. He did it one time. He can do it again. But as she's out there and during the great tribulation, Satan will cast a flood after the woman. The Bible says, and the serpent cast out of his mouth water as a flood unto the woman or like a river unto the woman that she might cease. He might cease her to be carried away or cause her to be carried away. With this great flood, notice, 
The flood will come from his mouth. The water could be literal or figurative. However, God delivered them previously from the Red Sea, which was literal water. The prophet Isaiah used this kind of language in Isaiah 8, 7 through 8. He says, Now therefore, behold, the Lord bringeth up upon them the waters of the river, strong and many, even the king of Assyria and all his glory, and he shall come up over all his channels and go over all his banks. Note, and he shall pass through Judah. He shall overflow and go over. He shall reach even, it shall reach even to the neck and the stretching out of his wings shall fill the breath of thy land. Oh, Emmanuel. Showing how Satan used people, you know, with, 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 with the symbols of water and all the rest with their texts. And the Bible says, that Satan will try to drown Israel, drown them out with the flood, but God will stop it. Notice what Ezekiel predict in Ezekiel 38, 22. He said, and I will plead against him with pestilence and with blood, and I will rain upon him and upon his bands and upon the many people that are with him and overflowing rain and great hailstones, fire and brimstone. God will intervene. Thus will I magnify myself, he said, and sanctify myself, and I will be known in the eyes of many nations, and they shall know that I am the Lord Jehovah. And we see here now the defense of the woman Israel. The Bible says in verse 16, And the earth helped the woman, and the earth opened her mouth, and swallowed up the flood which the dragon cast out of his mouth. The earth will assist the woman Israel. The earth will open her mouth, the Bible says. Many commentators believe that this has to do with the church and it's attacked by Satan. The church or believers of Jesus Christ will be gone with the Lord in the rapture. We're talking about the great tribulation. We're talking about after the saints are in heaven and Jesus is, is carrying out the, the, the judgments of the great tribulation. And we find that believers will not endure the great tribulation. This will be a satanic attack. Satan will attack the nation of Israel during the great tribulation. Remember, the 144,000 witnesses that will be there preaching where John the Baptist left off from, 12,000 will come from each tribe of Israel. God will seal them. They will preach where John the Baptist left off. Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. So the attack against Israel by Satan will be ferocious. It will come like a flood, but God will defeat the attacks of Satan and the nation of Israel will be delivered as he touches down on Mount of Olives as Lord of Lords, King of Kings, the Messiah, and they will see him and he will save them out of their trouble. And so after, you know, we find all this happening and the, the woman Israel is secure, Satan will be angry. And notice, he will attack the 144,000. He will get angry with the nation and will make war with the remnant of a seed, as we mentioned. Notice, Satan never has never given up on the attack of the nation Israel because it was Israel that brought forth Jesus Christ that we can have salvation. Notice, Satan attacked from the brickyards of Pharaoh, Egypt, the Haman's gallows, the, the, the uh, cruel attic of Herod of killing all the young boys, the, the, the rage of, of, of Hitler and his purge that he put on the Israeli people. And now in the great tribulation, Satan will lead an attack using the, the beast or the antichrist and the false prophet and the nations that will turn against Israel. Satan will have them all control and they will fight. But remember, the Bible says those that kept the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ, that's the key that the remnant would have. And we find here the warning of God. 
to those people who would not know Jesus Christ as Savior, but will endure the great tribulation. He says, when Satan is cast out of heaven, woe unto the inhabitants of the earth and of the sea. For the devil has come down unto you having great wrath. Why? Because he knows that his time is short. Satan knows that Jesus will be coming to defeat him at Armageddon. He knows that Jesus Christ will have one of his angels to capture him and cast him into the bottomless pit for 1,000 years. Revelation 21 through 3. The Bible says, And I saw an angel come down from heaven, having the key of the bottomless pit, and a great chain in his hand, and he laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent, which is the devil and Satan, and bound him a thousand years, and cast him into the bottomless pit, and shut him up, and set a seal upon him, that he should deceive the nations no more, till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loose for a little season. Satan knows that all this is coming. Therefore, he remains the roaring lion, which all of us need to watch out for. The Apostle Paul reminds us that we should not let anything hinder us. Remember, all these things are to come. These are things to come. So Paul say, remember, be persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels, nor principalities, powers, things present, things to come, heights, depths, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. So, he re Peter reminds us, be sober and vigilant for your adversary, the devil, as a roaring lion, he walks about, seeking whom he may devour. First Peter 5, 8. He wants to tear all of us to bits, knowing that if we know Jesus as Savior, we'll be raptured and be with him and come back to rule and reign on the earth when Jesus sets up his kingdom. But then, you know, after that we find Satan will be loose. And again, he, all those people who've been on earth for a thousand years, those who Jesus Christ allowed to come in, come in, you know, as we look at the judgment of the goats, the sheep and the goats, those who will be able to come in to spend their time, even though they would not be born again, he would let some people, when he comes back, to come and too. They will have children and so on for a thousand years and under the reign of Jesus, letting them see that a good environment and a good condition and, and even having Jesus Christ, the God Almighty, living with you on earth. <coughs> could not change the hearts of people. It's not the environment. It's the inside change. So Jesus Christ is saying to all today, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If any man, woman, boy, girl, would hear my voice, and if he or she would open the door and come in, and to me, I will come in. And we will fellowship together. May you do that today. These things are yet to come. But as we wait, Satan is still a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. He attacked families. He attacked people through race and all kinds of other issues that are out there. Diseases, sicknesses, and all the rest. But remember, Overcome him by the blood of the Lamb, the word of your testimony, and don't even care about life. Just keep trusting him, knowing that absent from this body is present with the Lord. We're going to rule and reign with him one day and live with him forever. But yet we can still have peace and go on as we trust him today. May God bless you and may you continue to be with him. In the name of Jesus, amen.